This is a numerical example about a perfect competitive firm, which means a firm in perfect competition. So here we have quantity from 0 to 5. We have price is equal to 8. And discover that here it's the same price at each quantity. Why? Because in perfect competition, firms are price taker, which means they take the price from the market and not a single firm can influence the price. Consequently, any firm in perfect competition, they choose which quantity to produce, but they don't choose the price because they are price takers. Our total revenue is price times quantity. So here our total revenue is 0 times 8 is 0, 1 times 8 is 8, 2 times 8 is 16, 3 times 8 is 24, 4 times 8 is 32, 5 times 8 is 40. Then, total fixed cost is given, which is constant at each level, which is 10. And our total variable cost is given 0, 5, 9, 12, 20, and 30 at output of 5. Then we need to calculate our total cost. Our total cost is equal to total fixed cost plus total variable cost. So 10 plus 0 is 10, 10 plus 5 is 15, 10 plus 9 is 19, 10 plus 12 is 22, 10 plus 20 is 30, 10 plus 30 is 40. Then we need to calculate our profit. Our profit is total revenue minus total cost. So 0 minus 10 is negative 10, 8 minus 15 is negative 7, 16 minus 19 is negative 3, 24 minus 22 is 2, 32 minus 30 is 2, 40 minus 40 is 0. Then we need to calculate our margin revenue. What do we mean by margin revenue? This is our additional revenue when we sell one more unit. Therefore, it will be change in total revenue divided by change in quantity which means our new total revenue minus old total revenue divided by new quantity minus all the quantity. So what will be our margin revenue here for producing one unit? For producing one unit, it will be a change in total revenue, which is 8 minus 0 divided by 1 minus 0. So this will give us 8. What if we'd like to calculate it for Q2? Therefore, I will get here. 16 minus 8 divided by 2 minus 1. It will give me 8. At Q3, 24 minus 16 divided by 3 minus 2. It will give us 8. For Q4, it will be 32 minus 24 divided by 4 minus 3. It will give us 8. For 40, it will be 40 minus 32 divided by 5 minus 4. As you see here, our margin revenue is constant, which is equal to the price. And we know that for any perfect competitive firm, margin revenue is equal to the price, is equal to our demand curve. Therefore, we don't need to calculate margin revenue. We could easily say that this firm exists in perfect competition, so margin revenue is equal to price. But here we calculate it just to double check. Then we'd like to calculate our marginal cost. What do you mean by marginal cost? This will be our additional cost if we produce one more unit. So it will be a change in total cost divided by a change in quantity, which means our new total cost minus all total cost divided by new quantity minus all the quantity. Do we have another formula to calculate marginal cost? Yes, we can calculate marginal cost from a change in total variable cost divided by change in quantity, which is equal to new total variable cost minus all total variable cost divided by new quantity minus all the quantity. So let's calculate here our marginal cost for producing one unit. So I will get here 15 minus 10 divided by 1 minus 0. It will give me 5. For producing two units, 19 minus 15 divided by 2 minus 1, it will give us 4. For producing three units, 22 minus 19 divided by 3 minus 2, it will give us 3. For producing four units, it will be 30 mi minus 22 divided by 4 minus 3, it will give us 8. For producing five units, 40 minus 30 divided by 5 minus 4, it will give us 10. Then we would like to calculate our profit maximizing output. We know that our condition for profit maximizing output is marginal revenue is equal to marginal cost. So if I look here at marginal revenue and marginal cost, I know that 8 is equal to 8 at which quantity? At quantity 4. So our profit maximizing output is at Q star equal 4. We should produce 4 units. And if we look here at profit, you'll discover that we get our maximum profit at Q4, which is equal to 2. Then we need to calculate our average variable cost. Our average variable cost is total variable cost divided by quantity. So our average variable cost for producing one unit is total variable cost, which is 5 divided by 1, it will give us 5. Second one, 9 divided by 2, it will give us 4.5. Then 12 divided by 3, it will give us 4. 
then 20 divided by 4, it will give us 5. Then 30 divided by 5, it will give us 6. Then we have our average total cost or average cost, which is our total cost divided by quantity. So our average total cost is total cost divided by quantity, 15 divided by 1, it will be 15. 19 divided by 2, it will be 9.5. 22 divided by 3, it will be 7.33. 30 divided by 4, it will be 7.5. 40 divided by 5, it will be 8. Then, what will be our short-term decision? Shut the firm survive, stay in market, or shut down temporarily? We know that the firm should shut down in the short run if price is lower than average variable cost. So I need to compare my price with average variable cost. So our short run decision is, let's look here. If we produce Q1, our price is 8, our average variable cost is 5. Since price is bigger than average variable cost, so the firm should survive. Then 8 is bigger than 4.5, survive. 8 is bigger than 4, survive. 8 is bigger than 5, survive. 8 is bigger than 6, the firm should survive, stay in business. The firm shouldn't shut down in the short run. What about the long run? Our decision in the long run to exit the market if price is lower than average total cost. So now our long run decision will be based on comparing the price with our average total cost. Look here, 8 is lower than 15. So this means that we should exit at quantity equal 1. What about quantity equal 2? Our price is 8, our average total cost is 9.5. Price is lower than average total cost, therefore exit. And if you check here, you'll discover that our profit is negative, which means we make a loss. Therefore, in the long run, at Q1 and Q2, the firm should exit. The firm should leave the market permanently. Then what about at Q3? Our price is 8 and our average total cost is 7.33. 8 is bigger than 7.33, so this means that survive, is stay in business. Then 8 is bigger than 7.5, survive, stay in business. 8 is equal to 8, survive, stay in business.